When we opened in 1979, the place was half the size that it is now. The change in how the venue looks has been exciting because it went from being very intimate and very small, then adding the balcony, and then bumping out to be two storefronts. And when we expanded the room into twice as wide, the double wide Iron Horse, we then expanded the balcony and got a, a capacity that would be competitive even in a larger city. It harkens to some of the great places in Boston, like Passim, where it's got this kind of real folk and rootsy heritage. But, you know, with the seats up top and the table service, you, you know, you feel like you're in an old-timey saloon. It's got great acoustics. It's got great performers. It's almost like watching a show in your living room. It always sounds great in this room to me, you know, and the different sound men, especially Jim Frogabini, who's worked here for a long time, do a great job on the sounds. It feels like there's no such thing as a bad seat in the house. You know, the words on the wall that say music alone shall live, it's just so kind of existential, but you know, you look at that while you're here and you think, wow, it's just like, that's what this is about. I grew up with a house that was absolutely filled with music and it was filled with live music on a monthly basis. My folks would get together, you know, 20, 30, 40, and even 50 people, you know, spilling into their living room. And in their house, there was a sign that my mom had hand lettered that said, flood the house with music. And it wasn't a big jump for me when we opened the horse to uh, putting something on the wall before we even opened that said music alone shall live, which in turn is a line from a German or Yiddish folk song. All things shall perish from under the sun, music alone shall live, never to die. Once in a while I'll come to a show and there's this thing that happens to me that I don't even have a name for yet, but it's like that feeling you get in your chest, it starts to well up and suddenly you're in the zone. And it's usually during a song an example would be Laurie McKenna's song, Make It Hurt. If you're gonna tell me you don't love me, make every word hurt. That lyric, I looked around, I felt it, and I saw a woman start to weep and get up and walk out of the club. She was so moved by that lyric. And there are other ones, I'm slightly tearing up here just thinking about it. This is an example of what I'm talking about, is that here at the Iron Horse, it's more likely that you're gonna have that moment, the proximity you have to the band changes the whole dynamic, and it's a much more personal experience. Whatever the artist kind of brings to the concert, I think the audience sort of shares that and understands it and, and gives back to, to, the, to the performers. You can see a show where you can dance. You can see a show where you can just sit down and listen. When the musicians come out of their green room, they come up and they actually have to walk through the audience to get to the stage. And the person's right there, you know, right there in front of you. There's an excitement in that to me of the performer just walking up on the stage and taking the guitar. And sometimes they can remember you. And they say, welcome back. And you say, well, well you welcome back to Northampton. I love that about the horse. And I know as a musician on the other side, talking to other musicians, everybody loves to play the Iron Horse. And I think that when they come back, they remember the very first time they, they got their first booking here. A lot of people that opened up for somebody here ended up like headlining the Calvin Theater later on. Lyle Lovett will come and perform for us at the Calvin. And almost every show, he gives a shout out to the Iron Horse. And he talks about his first time playing the Iron Horse and what a thrill it was. We hear that so often that it, we sometimes lose sight of, of the fact that, you know, for some performers being able to play here when they're just getting started is just a real huge, huge thing for them. If you were a Valley-based band, you gotta play the Iron Horse. That's where artists of all stripes have over the course of the years from, you know, Dar Williams and Livingston Taylor and all that sort of our, our honing their chops. For young musicians, that's a real career moment for them. It's a great place to start a career. If you went to Boston or New York, you'd expect to see a bigger space for much more money, sometimes two, three, four, five times what it will cost to see them at the horse. And yet they're willing to do that. More well-established artists want to play it for the same sort of reasons that I think Beck did, because it's got a, a vibe almost like no other club. It's interesting. It's diverse. It's a little funky. It's the horse. 
a big part of the Iron Horse's success is owed to a small little radio station that kind of grew up in Greenfield initially, um, but then moved to Northampton, uh, which is WRSI. Jordy and his partner John Riley started the Iron Horse in 1979. WRSI signed on the air in 1981. So here are these two now kind of heritage musical icons in the Valley happening at the same time. They'd spin the records of who was going to be here or sometimes a performer would be here and then they'd start spinning but all of a sudden this music community grew up around the Iron Horse and around the radio station. I think we both see the value in each other in regards to just strengthening a musical core for, for Northampton and the Valley. And I think that symbiotic relationship has been great for both the Iron Horse and for WRSI. 